Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. I will go over a deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. A question that's sent to me by one of my subscribers, farhatlectures.com. And this is what I do for my subscribers. If you have another CPA course and you have a question and you're stuck on it, you're one of my subscribers, you can send it to me. I'll be more than happy to look at it. And if I see it benefit you, it benefit others, I may share it. And that's what I am, that's what I am doing. So this question is about the third tax asset. This question can be easily turned into a complicated simulation, but let's go over the question to show you how it solved this question. This, I would say challenge, initially looks like a challenging question, but I will show you how to solve it practically without doing any computation. But I'm gonna explain everything in details because this is my nature, I'm a teacher. That's why people like my lectures because I explain stuff. But I can assure you, you can answer this question without even doing any computation. So let's start the problem. Gyro company began business on January 1st, uh, January 2nd, year one. They used the double declining balance method, the depreciation for financial statement purposes for its building and the straight line for income tax. So simply put, we have gap and you don't have to be writing this, but on the exam, just have, or you can write it if you want to, it doesn't matter. I'm, the reason I'm doing this is for you to explain it. So for financial statement, they use gap for the tax for the IRS, they use the tax. For this method, they use the double declining balance. And for this method, they use straight line. Simply put, this is gap and this is tax. That's what we have. On January 16th, year three, so something happened in year three, Gyro elected to switch to the straight line method for both financial and tax purposes. So that's what they decided to do to switch. And that's, they should have started and stick with the same method from the beginning, but that's beside the point for simplicity, but that's not what we are doing here. So here, what they did in year three, in year three, so if we have year three, they switch both to the straight line. So this becomes a straight line. The building cost is 240,000 in year one, which has an estimated useful life of 15 years and no salvage value. Data related to the building is as follows. So they're giving us the data about the depreciation. Now, how can I turn this into a complicated simulation? Well, here what they gave us is they gave you the building cost. Well, rather than give you the building cost, I can give you an exhibit. And in that exhibit, I can put down the closing working papers for when they bought the building two years ago. And in the closing paper, someplace in the closing paper, you have to scan it and you would know that the cost of the building is 240,000. Now you have the cost, 240,000. Rather than giving you this information, I can give you, rather than doing the computation for you here, I can either make you the, make you complete the computation or I can give you an intimidated depreciation schedule and you have to pull those numbers from that complicated or intimidated depreciation schedule. And those are two more exhibits. I'll give you one schedule for the double declining balance, one schedule for the straight line. Or I don't give you anything. I would say you, you compute this. So I, I can turn this into an easy, easy peasy <laughs> intimidated simulation but let's go back to what we are being asked here what we are being asked here so they're giving us this information and they're asking us to choose between a b c d now here's what i need to tell you i'm not going to say all because if i say all that's like you know i don't want to take risk by saying all it means everything most let me put it this way you should be able to eliminate two answer choices on most cpa exam questions on most if not all, I'm not going to say all, but most. Why? Well, let me eliminate two questions here because initially you think I can't, I really, I cannot eliminate anything. Look, if you know anything about basic depreciation and you should know something about depreciation when you walk into that exam, if you know anything about the third tax asset, the third tax liability, even basic information, basic understanding. And how do you, how do you get that basic understanding? Look, if you have a CPA course and you don't get it, Go to farhatlectures.com. I explain those information, whether it's depreciation, the third tax asset, the third tax liability, or all these combines together. It doesn't matter. If you know anything about this, you should be able to eliminate two answer choices. Which two answer choices you can eliminate? A, it says there should be no reduction in gyros, the third tax liability, or the third tax asset. Look, there's going to be a reduction, a change, some sort of a reduction in the deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability, a reduction. And here they made it easy for you. They made it either asset or liability. No, there's gonna be a reduction. Therefore, I could eliminate A, there's gonna be a change. Gyro deferred tax asset should be eliminated or asset or liability should be eliminated. What they're saying in B is once we switch, 
everything is reserved, uh, reversed, and it, re it reverses 100%. And as a result, whether you have an asset or a liability, you should be able to get rid of it. No. When we switch from the double declining balance to the straight line, we're going to have some sort of a reversal, but it's not going to be 100% because you are not starting at the same level. So you could also eliminate B because there would be there would be some sort of a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. It will not be eliminated. It will not be eliminated. So notice I eliminated two answer choices. So if I have to guess, I'll have to guess between C and D. And I'm going to show you in a moment. If you if you think about this question like another 10 seconds, you'd say, oh, you would know the answer. Okay, so let me see, let me show you what's going to happen here. So under the under the under gap, here's what's going to happen under gap and under tax. And you can stop here and you could choose the right answer, but I'm going to go all the way till the end. Under gap, you have an asset that you purchase at two for 240,000 and you took two years worth of depreciation. You have 50,000. So your book value for this asset on the books is 190. For tax purposes, you have an asset for 240,000 and you took 32,000 worth of depreciation, which in turn, it's going to give you 208,000 basis. What do we see here? We see that they took more depreciation for book purposes than tax purposes. It means in the future, we're going to have more tax deduction. Why? Because we did not really reduce our book value as much as uh, we did not really reduce our tax basis as much as our book value. What does that mean? It means we are dealing with the deferred tax asset situation. I'm done. Once I know I eliminated A and B, I'm down to C and D. There is no reduction in deferred tax liability. I don't have a deferred tax liability. I'm, I'm dealing with a deferred tax asset and the answer is C, 554, but I'm going to show you the computation. But at this point, you're done. If you don't have time, you will go with C and you should be confident C is the answer. So simply put, um, let me repeat myself. Once you know there should be a reduction, should be a reduction, there should be some sort of a reversal. Here, there should be no reduction. There should be a reduction. There should be a reversal, whether you have an asset or a liability. Once you know there, they, something will exist. So if you understand A, you'd understand B. And you know, those two are not possible answers. You're down to C and D. Once you scan this, you, you don't even have to do this. Once you know they took more for gap, they took more depreciation for gap than tax. It means in the future, we're going to have more tax deduction. We have a deferred tax asset. C is the answer done. That's it. But let's keep going to answer this question fully because I want you to see how we get to the 554. Okay. So here again, we have uh, the difference between the two. And first, now you need to know how much is the deferred tax asset. Well, if you compute the difference between the two, we have 18,000 of difference in book value because 190 and 208 is 18,000. So we have 18,000 worth of differences. And they're given us here, I'm sorry, the, the tax rate for this problem, I did not copy this down. The tax rate is 40%. So sorry about that. The tax rate is 40%. So the tax rate is 40%. As a result, we're going to have a deferred taxed asset of 7,200. So as of year two, as of year two, we have a deferred tax asset of 7,200. And you know when they switch, it's not going to be exactly 7,200 with reverse. Hopefully you know this because it's not going to equal. It just mathematically, it's not going to equal. Now what's going to happen? You have to compute year three. Again, you don't have to do this on the exam day. Once Again, once you know you're dealing with the deferred tax asset, move on. Okay, let's keep on going. So we have a deferred tax asset. What's going to happen in year three is this. In year three, let me put year three in a, in a different color. In year three, this asset here under tax purposes, we're going to keep on deducting 16,000. So we're going to take 208 and reduce 208 by 16,000. That's going to bring us down to 192. This is year three depreciation. We also have to compute year three depreciation for gap. Now gap will change. Gap will change. Why? Because now we have to compute the, the gap, which is 190,000, and we'll have to divide this number by 13 years, the remaining years. Now it's a straight line. So we'll take basically the book value, what we have divided by 13 years, and our depreciation becomes 17,615 for the remaining life at this point. Therefore, we deduct 14,615 for year three for this asset. Now the book value for uh, for gap purposes is 175,385. 
385. Well, now we have to we, now we have to see how much is the difference in the book value and reverse some of it. Well, let's compute the difference. Let me get my calculator out. So we have 175 385 minus 192. So the difference in book value is 16,000, 16,618. The difference is still 16,618. And we're going to multiply this by 0.4. Therefore, we should have $6,647 in the third taxed asset, 6647. So we should have 66. Oops, let me just. 60, 66, we should have in total 66, 47. It means we have to reduce it. Is 554 the answer? Let me see. So if we take 7,200, and we're saying one of the answers should be a reduction by 554, and that's going to give us 66, 46, 66, 47. So notice part of the entry is to reduce, sorry, is to reduce, sorry, is to reduce the third tax asset by 554. And you, again, you don't have to go this far on the exam. If you went this far, it means you're not sure or you're really confused. Okay. Uh, but if you have, if you understand this, you will be good to go. You'll be good to go. As soon as you know, you have a deferred tax asset, choose C and move on with confidence. Okay. Now, once again, what I'm going to do is invite you, invite you to farhatlectures.com because on farhatlectures.com, the difference between what I offer on my website and what CPA prep course offer is this. I explain the material. I show you basically behind the scene what's going on so you understand it. And a CPA co CPA prep course, which is I don't compete with them. I wish I can compete with them. They will eat me alive. I can't. So what I do is I help CPA candidate understand the material. So when they use their CPA prep course, whether it's Becker, Roger, Wiley, Glein, Sergeant, or whatever CPA course they are using, it will be easier for them. They will have more confidence after going over my material. Your CPA is a lifetime investment in your career. Take it seriously. Invest in yourself. It's a 30 to 40 year investment. My subscription is really a nominal fee. It's less than a cup of coffee, even at Wawa, less than a cup of coffee per day. And I'm always here to help you, to assist you. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.